Outer space is a vast, dark place that is home to planets of all types and sizes, including the Earth. Today, aboard our spaceship, we'll be exploring all the corners of the solar system that the Earth calls its home. Exploring the Solar System Our space exploration vehicle has broken free of the Earth's gravitational pull and is now rocketing through space. We can also explore space through machines like the one we can see over there. We call these machines satellites. Satellites orbit and monitor the Earth. There are five ways to explore space. As you can see, our spaceship is moving in close to a celestial body in order to make observations. This is known as the swing-by method. When a spaceship rotates around a celestial body to observe it, we call the spaceship an orbiter. Now, let's land our ship on the surface of the celestial body. This method of exploration is called a soft landing. Soft landings can be made by both manned and unmanned spacecraft. Other methods of space exploration are surface impact, where a spaceship crashes into the surface of a celestial body and transmits data back to Earth up until its last moments, and probe drops, where a probe parachutes down into a celestial body that has no hard surface to land on. Some examples of space exploration probes are the Voyager series, Magellan, Deep Impact, Apollo 11, Pathfinder, and Galileo. These space probes use the swing-by, orbital, surface impact, manned landing, unmanned landing, and probe drop methods to explore various celestial bodies. First, the Voyager series were used to explore the Jovian planets. We will discuss what Jovian planets are in just a moment. Magellan was used to explore Venus. It used radar to map the surface of Venus. Pathfinder was used to make an unmanned landing of the Sojourner robot on the surface of Mars. Lastly, Galileo was used to explore Jupiter and its moons and was the first ever space mission to drop a probe into Jupiter's atmosphere. Our solar system is home to eight planets. From nearest to farthest from the Sun, these planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The planets from Mercury to Mars are the terrestrial planets, while the planets from Jupiter to Neptune are the Jovian planets. There are big differences between terrestrial and Jovian planets. Comparing Terrestrial and Jovian Planets First, terrestrial planets have a small mass and radius and a high average density. Jovian planets, on the other hand, have a large mass and diameter with a low average density. While terrestrial planets have many surface features, Jovian planets have largely flat surfaces. Terrestrial planets are comprised of rock, including iron and silicone-based minerals, and their atmospheres are made up of heavy gases, such as nitrogen and oxygen. Jovian planets are gaseous, made up of hydrogen and helium. Their atmospheres are made up of light gases, such as helium and hydrogen. Terrestrial planets rotate slowly, giving them a long rotation period. Jovian planets rotate quickly, making their days short. Lastly, terrestrial planets do not have any rings around them and have few or no satellites. Jovian planets have rings and a large number of satellites. Now, let's explore the planets one by one. Mercury is the planet closest to the Sun and is the smallest of the terrestrial planets. Since it has no atmosphere, the temperature fluctuations between day and night are huge. The planet is littered with craters. Next, we have Venus. Venus has a thick atmosphere comprised mainly of carbon dioxide. Due to the greenhouse effect, its surface is scorching hot at approximately 470 degrees Celsius. The planet is also highly reflective, making it appear bright in the nighttime sky. 
and rotates clockwise. Next, let's move past the Earth to Mars. Like Earth, Mars has an axis of rotation tilted at around 25 degrees. This means it experiences seasons as it orbits the Sun. It has polar caps made of ice and dry ice, and the size of its polar caps varies by season. The atmosphere is very thin, approximately 100 times thinner than that of the Earth. It is mostly made up of carbon dioxide, just like Venus. Dust containing iron oxide makes the surface look red, and the planet is home to Olympus Mons, the tallest volcano in the solar system. Next in line is Jupiter, the first of the Jovian planets. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It spins at a high speed, creating stripes along the planet's equator and massive swirls in its atmosphere. A strong magnetic field causes auroras in the atmosphere. Next is Saturn, which rotates at a fast rate and has a low density. Saturn is the smoothest of the planets and is surrounded by rings made of grains of rock and ice. Saturn also has a strong magnetic field and auroras. Our next planet, Uranus, looks blue-green. Its axis of rotation is tilted sideways and is nearly aligned with the planet's solar orbit. The planet rotates in a clockwise direction. Our last planet is Neptune, a blue planet with swirls in its atmosphere. And with that, we have explored all the planets of the solar system. Does anyone remember Pluto? Pluto used to be known as the ninth planet of the solar system, but the International Astronomical Union decided to remove Pluto from the list of planets in 2006. Instead, they created a new category called dwarf planets. A celestial body needs to satisfy three conditions in order to be classified as a dwarf planet. First, it must have a solar orbit. Second, it must have enough mass to maintain a spherical shape. Third, it must have other celestial objects in the neighborhood of its orbit and must not be a satellite of another planet. Examples of dwarf planets include Pluto, Ceres, and Eris. A satellite is a celestial body that orbits a planet within a defined period of time. Jovian planets have more satellites than terrestrial planets. The Moon is a satellite of Earth. The satellites of Jupiter are, from largest to smallest, Ganymede, Callisto, Io, and Europa. Asteroids, small celestial bodies, also orbit the Sun. Asteroids are rocky celestial bodies that come in irregular shapes and a range of different sizes. Most asteroids are formed between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter and have marks on their surfaces where meteors collided with them in the past. If an irregularly shaped asteroid rotates, its brightness will vary. Some asteroids even have their own satellites. Asteroids are debris left over from the formation of the planets early in the life of the solar system, or the result of later collisions between celestial bodies. They contain important information about the time when the planets in the solar system were formed. Comets are another type of celestial body that orbits the Sun. Comets have elliptical or parabolic orbits and are made up of a head portion, which is comprised of a nucleus and a coma, and a tail. At the center of the coma is the nucleus. The closer a comet gets to the Sun, the quicker it moves and the longer its tail. Lastly, there are meteorites. These are the shooting stars we make wishes on. When debris from comets and asteroids are pulled into the Earth's atmosphere, friction with the atmosphere creates heat and light. A meteor shower is a phenomenon in which large numbers of these meteorites are observed at the same time in a certain area of the night sky. Sometimes, meteors do not burn up completely in the atmosphere and crash into the surface of the Earth. Meteors contain valuable information, 
regarding the origins of the solar system. With future developments in technology, we may very well encounter life outside our own planet. In order for a planet to be able to support life, it must be located in the habitable zone around a star, where water can exist in a liquid state and have an atmosphere that is adequately thick and has a favorable composition. These are the conditions that make life possible for us here on Earth. Currently, the celestial bodies in the solar system considered to have the highest chances of supporting life are Mars and Europa, one of Jupiter's satellites. Today's journey through the solar system was the last episode in the Y series on Earth science. How was the ride? We hope our series has helped you obtain useful information about the Earth on which we live. Series of Why